Hi everyone, I'm Professor Tech, and this week we're talking about it. I finally got it in the mail, the Steam Deck OLED model. I am absolutely in love with this device, and I have a few reasons why I think that you'll be in love with it too. And a few of these reasons really surprised me. So it's no secret that the Steam Deck is probably my favorite handheld device of all time. So when Valve Surprise announced an updated intergenerational model that for the most part seemed to only make minor updates, my interest was gained. And after watching both Linus Tech Tips and David 2 dds video on it, my interest skyrocketed. Yes, this has been the bell and whistle that Valve has touted, like the absolutely beautiful OLED display that has me just Ah, more on that in a bit. But also things like increased battery life and an overall improvement to the internals pictured here. But that's not all they improved. They literally rethought every little thing about this refresh to the point that there are still things that I'm discovering about it that are different when compared to my original LCD model. Now, I'll admit, maybe, maybe I have a bit of rose colored glasses on and maybe some of these items are just because I have a brand new unit in my hands. But if memory and experience is anything to go by, here are five of my favorite features of the Steam Deck OLED. So yeah, let's start with the easy one in the room, the display. This OLED panel is one of, if not the best OLED display I've ever seen in a handheld portable gaming device, and it more than sweeps the floor with its competition, including both the Lenovo Legion Go and the Asus ROG Ally. And it, of course, absolutely smashes into oblivion the previous model LCD screen on the original Steam Deck. Representing 100% of both the sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts, it really is something to behold. While the obvious comparison is to that of the LCD Steam Deck, something that I think is more recent and rather a more fair comparison is the ROG Ally. Seeing as it boasts an incredibly high color spectrum and higher definition display coming in at 1080p versus the Steam Deck 720p, it really is more of a proper opponent in terms of punching weight because of the added features in this updated unit. While I can't properly show it on my display here given that there are several layers of visual fidelity loss via not only my camera but also whatever screen you happen to be watching this video on, I hope that you can at least see some of the difference here. I promise that in person it is much much better on the Steam Deck versus the ROG Ally, but the Asus ROG Ally comes in as a really great display as well. So while the Ally has a higher fidelity screen, meaning more pixels, you won't hear me argue against it because, well, math. And the Steam Deck's deep, rich blacks and detailed highlight values allow for more visual clarity without as many pixels and as much light bleed, which leads to an overall clearer image. And you know what else is clear and more vibrant and exciting? <laughs> That's right, the power button indicator. Okay, so while it's not by any means a leading feature of the OLED upgrade, it was a nice welcome gift to the early adopters of the refresh because it's super handy for power users or people that just like to use their Steam Deck a lot. It's now RGB coded, meaning not only does it just look more aesthetically pleasing than a bright white LED, but it also has the ability to communicate more information to the user. For example, according to r slash Steam Deck Reddit, there are several different things your deck might be doing in the background and the light is how you know what's going on. Blinking blue LED means the deck is applying an update, while a blinking white LED indicates that the unit is in the boot process. Come across an orange or a green light while charging? Not to worry. Orange simply means that your device is receiving effectively a trickle charge and not receiving the full 40 watts supported by the deck, while green means that your unit is fully charged and ready for more gaming. That's worth hitting the like button down below for if, um, if you wanna do that. Or maybe you've come across three blinking red lights when trying to power on your device. Is it dead? Is it bricked? No. It just doesn't have enough power to turn the display on and boot the system. So instead of freaking out like I just did, simply put it on charge and wait a little while before booting. If you're using the included charger or a charger that supports 40 watt charging, you'll be up and gaming in virtually no time. And you know what else takes absolutely no time? The sleep to wake speed. One of my biggest gripes with the original Steam Deck was how long it took sometimes for the system to properly wake and re-engage me in the experience I had just put down earlier. Yes, while it did put me right back where I was before, even in non-Steam verified titles and emulators, it was always a bit sluggish. For somebody who's constantly in and out of airports, grabbing two to 10 minutes of gaming at a time when I can, this was kind of annoying, but better than nothing. 
don't get me wrong. But now it's been drastically improved. The Steam Deck OLED's wake time from sleep to normal is nominally faster and boots right into the game rather than prompting you with the rare but occasional Steam Deck logo splash screen from the original model. This also works nicely in reverse, putting the system to sleep and waiting for the fans to turn off is a bit of a habit of mine that I built after experience I had with another portable handheld in the ROG Ally just a few weeks ago. For more on that experience and my current thoughts on the state of the ROG Ally, click this card up here. While it's not the most important feature of a console or even the most exciting, I really do appreciate the Steam Deck and now the Steam Deck OLED's commitment to this feature. Like the PSP and DS long ago, being able to put your portable console into sleep mode is not only convenient, but adds to the experience of being able to play anywhere, anytime, even for short bursts of time. But you know what isn't a short burst of time? The battery life. Perhaps one of the biggest selling points of the Steam Deck OLED is its increased battery life. And as I mentioned in a video a few weeks ago, tagged above, I wanted a chance to test it out for myself. And I'm happy to report that while I didn't quite get the full upward lift of 50% increase in all my games, I did get a nominal uplift in almost every game by a significant amount, generally somewhere in the 30 to 50% range when compared to the Steam Deck LCD and sometimes even the full 50% as advertised. So for all of my takes on this, that satisfies Valve claim and itself may even justify the purchase for some people and their particular use case. As an added bonus, as also mentioned in that previous video, the extended length of the charging cable is a welcome addition. There were several times where I was in a hotel room or an airport or even just random trains where I needed a tad bit more cord length to make it a more positive experience when I was on the road. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who thought that would be a great addition and Valve made it happen. But my favorite thing so far that Valve has made happen with the Steam Deck OLED The controls. Forgot to record this in the original video. Thank you. That's right, my absolute favorite thing thus far has been a noticeable experience upgrade to what came before and the refinements, adjustments, and changes that have come to the Steam Deck OLED's controls. Let's start with the obvious and the easy one, the analog sticks. While the previous Steam Deck LCD sticks were decent, these sticks are rock solid. They're not Hall Effect joysticks, but they feel much better when playing. It could be the weight of the sticks, but it is also most likely the added tip on top of the sticks that make pushing and pulling the stick more effortless at a micro level, which really adds up in longer gaming sessions. Another area that they absolutely crushed it was the upgrade to the D-pad on the OLED Steam Deck. While I still don't think that it's quite as comfy for retro gaming as say the ROG Allies pad due to the stiffness, the added clickiness and responsiveness is a very much welcome upgrade. And while I admit that there is definitely somewhere on my old Steam Deck LCD's directional pad, there is definitely a stronger spring inside of this one, which is encouraging for long-term use. And while not an exhaustive list, a third major improvement are the increased haptics of the trackpads. Admittedly, I'm not someone who really uses the trackpads all that often, due to the types of games that I most often play. I do like that they have a greater sense of responsiveness when I do use them for navigating the desktop environment or the occasional first-person shooter where I would use them. I'm sure there are a lot of funds to use in games like Team Fortress 2 as well as Counter-Strike 2 as well. So the big question, what is my recommendation regarding the Steam Deck OLED? Go out and buy one. That's it, that's my recommendation. But no, if you already have a Steam Deck LCD model and you're pleased with it, I think that you're fine to stay where you are if you're enjoying your experience. But if you don't have a Steam Deck OLED or you've really started to put the hours in on your old model and feel like it's time to beef it up, I can absolutely recommend picking up this puppy. While I still need time to do comparisons to other consoles like the Lenovo Legion Go and the ROG Ally, get subscribed uh, because those videos will be coming in the future, I have a good feeling this is going to be my daily driver for the foreseeable future. And with that, if you like this video, make sure to get subscribed, like, and all that. You stuff. I'm Professor Tech. Love you peeps. And I'll see you next week. Bye.